Daffy, Bugs, Porky, Peppy, the Roadrunner, Wiley E. Coyote. Can you imagine Saturday mornings without them? Everyone recognizes these Warner Brothers characters, but the creators of these classic cartoons are just beginning to be recognized. And perhaps the greatest of these talents is Chuck Jones. From the late 30s to early 60s, Jones directed many of Warner Brothers' best cartoons. Like Acme Products, if it was made by Jones and Company, it had to be good. Our primary purpose was to make them, was to make each other laugh. And uh, because we, we, we didn't to preview and there was no such thing as demographics or any of that other nonsense, and there certainly was no such thing as a Needleson. So we had any idea whether we were doing it right or not. But we felt if we made each other laugh, hopefully that would, that would, the audiences would go along too. As director, so. Jones was responsible for all aspects of a cartoon, from how the characters acted and moved to overseeing dialogue, music, and effects. He and the other artists at Warner Brothers worked out of a corner of the lot affectionately known as Termite Terrace. Did you have creative freedom, support from the front office? No support, but we had creative freedom because we demanded it. And uh, so they were constantly at war with us. During his years at Termite Terrace, Jones played a major role in developing the personalities of Daffy, Bugs, and Porky Pig. And he created Peppy Le Pew, Marvin Martian, the Roadrunner, and Wiley E. Coyote. I invented the Coyote and Roadrunner, but uh, I never thought that was uh, being the father of a, of a coyote. It didn't sound to me to be enormously distinctive. <laughs> no one ever had a harder time just trying to get a bite to eat. Oh, ah, guard, turn, parry, dodge, steal, ah, thrust. I think the key to these cartoons is firstly that they were not talking down to kids. They were made for an adult audience as much as a children's audience. And the other thing about them is that they were made by young guys who were full of, full of fire, full of hell, and who were trying to sort of buck the system and do things that were irreverent and offbeat. Leonard Malton of Entertainment Tonight is one of America's leading experts on movies and a big fan of Chuck Jones. What about a favorite cartoon in particular? It's hard to pick just one great Chuck Jones cartoon, it really is. I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be One Froggy Evening, which doesn't have any established characters in it, but it's the kind of cartoon you can watch over and over and over again, and every time you watch it, you'll get something else out of it. Slam me a kiss by one, baby, my heart's on fire. Are you ready, eager young space cadet? All set, your hero ship, sir. The wonderful voices provided by the late Mel Blanc played a big role in bringing these characters to life, but coming up with them wasn't always easy. The crew had a tough time in particular with a new character named Daffy Duck, until someone hit on the idea of imitating the voice of Chuck's boss, Leon Schlesinger. And then we all realized that Leon was going to have to see the picture there by hear his own voice. Come along, Daffy, my name. And so the fateful day came. And to give us real a feeling of how much he loved us, he said, roll the garbage. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, while well, he looked around and stood up and looked around, and he, and he yelled, he says, Jesus, he said, that's a funny voice. Where'd you get that voice? <laughs> Welcome to Seattle, Mr. Jones. America has had a 40-year love affair with Chuck's work, and recently some of his fans had a chance to express their appreciation personally. Jones was in Seattle at the Circle Gallery promoting his new book, Chuck Amok, and his limited edition animation art. They love the films, they love the characters, and they really do, they care about them, and we cared about them, so to see that reflected in an audience, and particularly this audience of young people. <laughs> In 1963, the Warner Brothers Animation Department closed up shop, but you can't keep a good tune down. After entertaining four generations of fans, these characters are still as popular as ever. But will future generations fall for them? Well, that depends upon the sanity of the future generations, doesn't it? I mean, if they're as nutty as this one and love them so much, and the, the generations that are alive now, well, I, can only, I can only suppose that they will continue.